Real stories of werewolves, the dogmen from history, from your emails, illustrated and animated with the democratizing magic of machine learning AI. Welcome to Scary Stories. Nothing funny about werewolves. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I kind of grew up a spoiled brat, and I've been paying the price for it ever since. Having a hard time adjusting to actually living my life without my parents paving the way for everything. It turns out they made some bad investments, and we've all been struggling to learn to live on a lot less since then. But this story dates back to when I was a spoiled brat and I still had some friends. In those days, we had so much forested land behind the house we lived in that Dad actually had a log cabin built way back there in the woods. And then he and Mom could get away to the country and be pretty well isolated just by walking around 20 or 25 minutes through the brush behind the backyard. It was a nice arrangement for them and for me, as I was a teenage girl at the time, and I enjoyed having the house to myself. Mom would always forget something when they were camping and would usually pop back to the house to pick up supplies, so I couldn't exactly throw parties at the house. Even when I had a couple friends over, I'd tell them to hide if we heard Mom coming back home. This was especially true if I had boys over, but I even made my girlfriends hide, since Mom would leave faster and ask fewer questions that way. There was one weekend, however, when both Mom and Dad came back suddenly and unexpectedly, taking me and my female friend Ashley by surprise. They looked really upset and shaken up, and we both asked them what was wrong. Dad looked like he was going to cry, and Mom was super angry. She acted really indignant, as though she had somehow been insulted. Dad, on the other hand, looked like he'd been mugged and slapped around. I don't mean literally. I mean, that's what the look on his face said. Whatever made Mom act indignant made Dad act humble. Neither of them had begun to explain what happened, though. Ashley asked nervously if she should go home now. Dad said, oh no, of course not. But Mom said, yes, dear, I think that would be best. Not wanting to be part of whatever drama Mom was brewing, Ashley grabbed up her stuff and beat it toward the door, and I told her to text me when she got home safe. Dad perked up and insisted it wasn't safe out there, grabbing his car keys and turning to me to say, come on, let's drive your friend home. Once the three of us were in the car and driving toward Ashley's house, the two of us asked my father what the heck was going on and why Mom was on her high horse again. We thought the two of them had some sort of argument, but it turned out that the two of them had gotten a bigger fright at that back cabin than either of them even knew it was possible to have. You ever heard of the Michigan Dogman? Dad asked the two of us. I reminded him we lived in Wisconsin, and he told me that animals can't understand state boundaries. Ashley and I were like, wait, so you're saying you saw the Michigan Dogman? Dad looked like he was going to cry. And with a choked up voice, he said, that's sure what it looked like. Ashley's brother was, and I still think is, into the cryptical creatures or whatever you call them. You know, monsters like the Dogman. She said that the Michigan Dogman is in Wisconsin too. But here it's called the Wisconsin Werewolf. When Dad heard that, he shivered so hard that he almost drove off the road. And then he turned and started barraging Ashley with questions. Have you seen one? Was it taller than I am? Did its eyes glow in the dark? Did it bang on the walls of the cabin when you saw it? Ashley was like, whoa, whoa, I never saw one. I just have a dweeb of a brother who knows every monster. Whether it's from TV, movies, creepypastas, legends, or possibly from real life, too. Dad actually asked if he could meet with her brother, and the two of us burst out laughing because it was Ashley's younger brother, and the idea of Dad asking advice from that kid? Well, you'll have to take my word for it, it was just a funny thing to contemplate. That was when Dad stopped the car in the middle of the road, and turned to yell at us both, saying, There's nothing funny about werewolves. We would have laughed harder, except Dad was acting scary. We both looked behind and told him traffic was coming, that we were going to get rear-ended. Dad repeated that there's nothing funny about werewolves, and we were both, yeah, yeah, dude, you're 100% right, we totally agree. Like whatever he needed to hear to go back to driving us to Ashley's home. Once we got there, we asked Ashley's mom if I could stay over, since my parents seemed to be having some sort of acid flashback or something. When she said okay, I told Daddy to go home to Mom and I'd be back the next morning. So then we entered the period where Mom and Dad were home all the time. They stopped going to the cabin since they were now afraid of it, 
and the Dogman. Dad had regular meetings with Ashley's 13-year-old geek of a brother, who I'll call Nerdwin, asking him questions about the Dogman as though the kid were some kind of expert anthropologist or something. Dad hung on that kid's every word. My mom would make him triple chocolatey chocolate milk to keep him talking, and she would actually type notes into her tablet as Nerdwin spoke, googling the terminology he was using and treating this kid as some sort of visiting genius dignitary. It inflated Nerdwin's head, and he's never really gone back to normal since then. He thinks he's some kind of PhD of monsters or something. It got oppressive in the house, having to swim through their mood changes and mental pause. When Dad announced that he was springing for a two-week ocean cruise for him and Mom, I couldn't have been more excited. I'd finally be able to throw a party at the house. I wish I could throw a birthday party, but my birthday's in December. Ashley's is in August, though. So we decided that would be the event that we'd base the party around. We invited every handsome guy in the entire county, plus some cool girls we knew were all right. Ashley asked if we could throw it out back at the cabin in the woods. At first I hated that idea, but when she pointed out that we could go much wilder back there than we ever could at the house, I decided she might be onto something. My parents' house was like a museum packed with expensive art and cultural items, some of which were very old and very breakable. After all, we were teenagers. We were not looking to stage a sophisticated event. We were looking to get completely smashed, period. Teenagers have their priorities, you know. So Nerdwin somehow invited himself to the party. And he suggested we set up tents outside and around the cabin to make it our own little tent city festival or whatever. It seemed to make sense to me, as tents sounded easier to clean up than a cabin. I had an old tent that we could use that I didn't even mind throwing out afterward if it got wrecked. And Ashley and Nerdwin added a tent each. We decided first to get a keg, but then found out you had to be 21 to do that, so we just stole beers from our parents' basements and put them in a thing full of ice inside one of the tents. We had junk food like chips in a tent as well, so we could try to keep the food and drink out of the cabin and make it easier to clean up the next day. We felt like we had anticipated every angle, and we were looking forward to lots of people showing up for the party. The thing is, only two girls showed up and none of the guys. I think it was because we gave people directions to get to the cabin that might have been somewhat confusing. In the middle of the non-party, Ashley got texted by a guy saying that he was at my house with some other people, but none of them could find us or the party. Ash told them to wait where they were, and the two of us began our trek back through the dark, overgrown woods toward my parents' house, where we hoped to find all manner of attractive young men. Dog Manus interrupt us. So the two of us walked toward the house through some pretty dense and overgrown woods. My family hadn't really walked back to the cabin often enough to have beaten it down to a real path yet, so we still had to squeeze through some tight spots. Ash and I were both a little short, but not extremely. I was five foot four, so I was not and am not a midget, but I'm far from tall, and Ash is maybe an inch taller than me, I guess. We were laughing and joking and singing off key as we walked back unaware that we were being watched by two spooky, glowing eyes. Suddenly, there was a creature that looked an awful lot like a monster from an old 80s horror flick standing in front of us, trying to block our way. I started laughing, believe it or not. It wasn't because I was a fearless badass. It was because I thought this was one of the guys we were walking over to meet, wearing a werewolf costume as a joke. I wanted to run up and hug him and tell him what a great costume it was, but when I looked up at his eyes and inhaled to begin to speak to him, I saw him get angry. Angry that I was daring to make eye contact. Why would he be angry if he were one of those boys we had just gotten a text from? Answer is he wouldn't. Only an actual animal would have glowing eyes that got angry if you looked at them for too long. But he stood on two legs and was around six feet tall, so... How could he be an animal and not one of the boys? I tried to focus my eyes on this dude, and it dawned on me that he was more than six feet tall. In fact, he was taller than my dad, who's six foot three. My mind was spinning for multiple reasons, and I was not understanding what was happening. It's the Wisconsin werewolf, whispered Ashley, and this must have been the first time I considered the possibility that my parents had actually seen a wolfman in these woods behind the house. I think that I thought they were just being dramatic. Like maybe they saw a dog with an injured front paw walking around on its hind legs and they overreacted. When they would go on and on about this dog man, I found it annoying. I thought they were acting childish. 
So I was sort of in pain from the mental whiplash of suddenly standing in front of the actual creature that I thought my parents were dumb for having claimed to see. I mean, even Nerdwin had thought Dad was overreacting to his sighting. Heck, he was back at the cabin in the woods where the sighting had taken place. So even people who believed in the Dogman didn't seem afraid to meet at the Dogman cabin. None of us thought there would be any chance of seeing any wild animals at all. Once the music started blasting, we didn't even expect to see squirrels or anything because animals tend to stay away from loud places. Oh, but we weren't in a loud place now. We were in the quiet space between two loud areas. We were in the dark area between two brightly lit places. In other words, we were up the creek without a paddle. Ashley told me to stop looking at the thing, and I looked at the ground instead. I could hear it growling at me, but it seemed to be staying where it was and not advancing on us. I really didn't know what to do. I noticed Ash was on her phone, and I thought, this was kind of a weird time to be texting someone. But it turned out that it wasn't. It was the best time to be texting someone. Why? Because she was texting those boys to come rescue us. I know what you're thinking. She texted those same boys that already couldn't find their way back to the cabin? And that is a valid point. But it ended up being a moot point anyhow. As all of a sudden... The boys crashed through the woods, screaming. And we screamed back to help them find us. The Dogman werewolf sort of did the side shuffle and was gone faster than you could say White Knight, which is how we treated those boys. None of the guys had seen the werewolf, but the two of us girls had seen it leave. We told them all about it and they acted impressed, but I think they were just humoring us. In fact, one of them later told us he thought we were making it up to flirt with them. Isn't that weird? I do admit I've done some interesting things sometimes to start a conversation with a guy, but... I never faked an attack by a wolf man. Maybe I should. It did seem to work. Okay, so we went back and although there were only like eight or nine of us max there at any one time, we had a big fun party. I didn't feel scared of the dogman as long as I was in a well-lit area. And the guys didn't even think we were serious about the creature, so they certainly didn't care. It reached the point where one of the boys offered to drive people home, and another of the boys decided to stick around with me. You know to protect me from monsters. So after the group of them left, this boy and I went to the cabin and we started to sort of get to know each other better. I guess we must have been hot because when the banging on the outside of the cabin started, we both had to put our clothes back on in a hurry. It sounded like someone was angry outside and my greatest fear was that it was my dad. I know what you're thinking. It wasn't your dad, girl. It was something far worse. But I was still kind of naive in those days. I mean, this was like six years ago. Back then, I thought getting in trouble with dad and mom was a fate worse than death. Then, an actual fate worse than death reached its hand through one of the cabin windows, sending shattered glass flying. It was like a hairy, dark brown clawed monkey hand. It did not look like a dog paw. The hand hung nervously in the air for a second then withdrew from the glass. I got the impression that the creature did not understand what clear glass was until he broke the window pane. That means we were not facing off against a rocket scientist here. This was no wizard. It was just a big dumb animal, and it continued to stand there right outside that window, staring at its hand in confusion. Assuming this thing was not that bright, we should be able to scare it off in the way you can scare off most large animals, by spooking them by making a loud noise, or by surprising them unpleasantly in some manner. We girls had been making water balloons and throwing them at each other when the boys finally arrived, so I grabbed one of them and I untied one end. Water came out, and by fiddling with the nozzle, I could make it a hard, fine stream of water. I directed it right at the monster's face, and he retreated while making an upset dog kind of a sound. As the dog man retreated, the boy and I had a big laugh. So much for the big evil monster that had scared my parents into their ocean cruise. The boy and I went back to what we were doing, laughing really hard at the expense of that stupid dog man. Then, a boulder came smashing through the window. Then another boulder came through the window on the opposite side of the cabin. How many of those things are there? The boy asked me, and I told him I didn't know because I'm not the census lady. 
We ran into the pantry because it was the only room with no window in it. And we hunkered down on the floor like the house was being bombed. It sort of was, really. It sounded a couple of times like someone might have come inside the cabin looking for us, but they might have just been throwing more stuff through the windows. When we could see the light streaking into the cabin and hear morning birds, we took a chance at coming out of our hiding spot. Well, the house was a wreck, but I don't think the creature or creatures ever came inside. They threw rocks and branches through all the windows, though, and it was going to be a big job cleaning it up as far as I could see. But the boy, he had a sort of an evil idea. He asked me, don't your parents believe in these werewolf-type dogmen? I was like, I would expect them to believe in what they saw with their own eyes. So the boy said, let's just clean up after the party. Leave the cabin mess alone. If your parents asked how it happened, can't you just shrug your shoulders and blame the dogman? It's not like you would be lying. The dogman is who smashed the place up. Well, I felt guilty, but I followed his suggestion. We cleaned up the tents and threw them out. We cleaned up the bottles and the food. We left the broken glass, the rocks, the heavy branches, and the debris, all where the dogman had thrown them into the cabin. And we called it a day. When I took some pics of the wrecked cabin and texted them to my parents, they both told me they weren't surprised. They never questioned me about it. They never suggested that I was lying. Now years have passed, we're all poor, none of us can afford to live anywhere near where this story took place. And consequently, I no longer care if my parents find out about it. I'm an adult and these days they borrow money from me. We all live in urban locations now, and the Dogman is the furthest thing from any of our minds. But if I ever did go camping again in the Midwest, I think I would go in a group and make sure it was in a well-lit area. This is not something I would joke around about or take lightly, and that's because there is absolutely nothing funny about werewolves. You've just seen the first story in our week of scary Dogman and werewolf camping stories. One of the key points most of these kinds of witness reports underline is that if you are going to put yourself at risk out in nature, there is such a thing as safety in numbers. If you're camping alone, you're obviously far less safe than if you and your family or friends head out into Dogman Turf with this 16-person mansion of a tent. This cool three-wing tent is on sale by mail from Walmart at $100 off. The link to snag one at that discounted price is in the description. If you use that link, then allegedly this channel gets a small commission for each sale. A bunch of werewolves in the swamp made a promo video for this week. Get ready. It comes on loud. Scary Camping Week! Scary Camping Week! Fun Man Stories get teased! On Scary Camping Week! Ah! Camping and hiking stories all week plus. Find out how to get $100 off this tent that so you can camp safely in numbers inside of. Scary ah! camping week. Scary camping week. On this boy, you see. Across scary camping week. I think I just had an epiphany. Our EP is Valerie Gomez, a.k.a. Valkyrie. Please join us in thanking this episode's executive producer, Valerie Gomez, who just rejoined our channel memberships. That means she gets to see this past weekend's two brand new Secret Uncensored Members Only stories. And so can you. We have memberships starting as low as 99 cents a month, going up to $10, and each come with their own set of perks. To find out more about how you can help our channel, as well as access these perks, listen to what our international TV spokesmongrel has to say about it. Hank. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. 
to receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary stories.